And we're back. This is Elliot and Jose coming to you from Dreamland Comics in Schaumburg, Illinois. Thank you for joining us here on CCW TV. If you're watching this show for the first time, this is a show where we talk about comic books. It's pretty much just a conversation that we like to include you in on. So if you want to make comments, if you want to respond to our reviews, tell us that we're full of crap or that you think we're cool. Not that second one. I don't want to hear anything about the yeah, second really. one. We already get that enough. If you think we're full, being full of crap? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let us know. And also be sure to visit our blog at comicculturewarrior.wordpress.com. You'll find the link to it right here or down here if you're watching on the main page. Uh, an announcement I wanted to make. Jose uh, pointed, uh, corrected me on this uh, before we started taping today. Of course I did. We were supposed to announce the winner of the um, CCW, uh, what did we call it again? The CCW Create a Contest Contest. Right. But as we're taping this, we're actually taping on the 27th, so the contest isn't really done yet. It still has four more days to go on the blog. Right. So we can't really do that today. So what we're going to do is by the time this video um, is posted, we're going to have the top three nominees for the Create a Contest contest posted on the blog, and then you guys will be able to vote for uh, which contest was best. And that particular contest... Uh, whoever that particular contest will determine who wins the Blackest Night tie-in books and a complete set of Blackest Night rings, which we were even able to secure black ring, a Black Lantern ring for it. So yeah, um, actually, I have them right here. Awesome. So you know what we're trying to do here is, of course, reward you, our yeah, fans, and, for watching. And the reason why we're not announcing it is because. We've read a lot of them, and we like most of them, and I don't think it's fair to just have the two of us pick, because everything about this channel, everything about the blog, it's a community thing, so right. we're going to pick the best rate, and we're going to let you pick the winner, because that's, right. that's just how it should be. No, but these are all the comics you'll be getting in the, for the contest, they're all bagged and boarded really nice and stuff, and then all the rings are here too, so... So remember, to enter this contest, um, you would have to have been registered on the CCW blog. The winner will be con contacted via the email address that they gave us when they register on the CCW TV blog. Ooh, and cool little Green Lantern bag, too. Yeah. And all the rings. Pretty cool. My little brother was hitting me up, said I should, I should uh, rig the thing so that he can win it. And I said, I can't do that. You know. Well, if he would have said something, I might have been able to score him a set of rings. Eh, a little bit late for yeah, that. He now. didn't even ask, so he's a son of a bitch is what he is. And again, uh, I, I discovered something else, too. Uh, my younger brother, the firefighter, who's a ex-army, this guy was in the uh, served, and he was at the in the first Gulf War, blah, blah, blah. He watches this show, but he spent all of Christmas of us together just sitting there and constantly, like, uh, making fun of me and my sh and my the tiny microphone that I use, but the more and more he made fun, the more I was going. You would only know this if you watched the show. His buddies at the firehouse watched the show. Oh. He's a firefighter. That's pretty cool. And again, they could give a crap about me. They want to know when you're going to show up. You know, when can we hang out with Jose? Was he a Chicago firefighter? Yeah, he's a Chicago firefighter. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. It's all about you. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, which, going which firehouse? Uh, where? Engine 125. Like, I know where that is. It's like on the south, south, southeast side. Okay. Yeah. Because I used to live on the north side, so yeah. I actually know where He's on the north side. side. Okay. So, Sorry. In, a, in either case, um, you know, go to the blog, visit it, comment, get in on these things. Uh, we have lots of contests or lots of things going on. I've got a ton of stuff I want to get rid of and give away. I want to give it to you folks, but uh, yeah, to do that. Yeah, because people want your fucking garbage. No, I mean, cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got cool. I got some cool stuff. What so. am I gonna do with these used Yoda underoos? They don't fit me anymore. Well, uh, someone on someone on the blog will want to. You could get some DNA off of them. Oh god. <laughs> hey, what's uh, what's, what's going on with that whole Lehman thing with the the, the sign comics? Oh, that's right. Yes. Can we announce that? Yeah, sure. Uh, John Lehman, actually. Speaking of things, uh, John Lehman, uh, because he's a fan of our of our show. 
Um, we'll be sending us a bunch of signed issues of uh, Chew Number Five. He says he's got a, a, a bunch. He's going to mail them over to me. He's going to sign them with a shout out to CCW TV. Wow. And uh, because I told him, this is the thing. I asked him if he would sign some, and he went, "Yeah, sure." But uh, how much are you going to give me for them? And I went, but I want to give these to the viewers. He went, oh, okay, well, then I'll just ship them to you. I'll send them out. But see, the fact that he would want money is kind of ridiculous <laughs> because as soon as he signs those comics, they're worthless. They're worthless. See, get Rob Guillory to sign those comics. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll talk. Maybe yeah. we'll pay you for that. But yeah, there you go. John Lehman's autograph. But anyway, he, out of the goodness of his heart, I joke, out of the goodness of his heart, he's sending us a bunch of signed the copies. The goodness of his cold black heart? Cold. It's a coal. It's a piece of, yeah. it's like a metal thingy. It's like the Grinch, but it never got any bigger. Um, Story of your life. Yeah. You know, ouch. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, we're going to be sharing that with you guys, so be sure to participate. Okay, enough of that. Let's uh, jump into an, uh, another review, and... Um, this is another book that, you know, we've talked all throughout 2009 about, and I'm sure we're going to be r- raving about it in 2010. And I, 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 we do, we're doing a, we do this review almost every time. Sometimes we skip a month and come back to it, but I wanted to do this review um, for a couple of reasons. One, because we've this comic, we get more comments and email from people about this comic than anything else. Yeah, that's pe- true. We get more people commenting and emailing us, telling us, that they started buying this comic specifically because we keep reviewing it. Right. And everybody who has written in absolutely loves it. Yeah. So do us a favor. If you really do like the comic and you write, read it before uh, because of us, can you like, like write to Robert Kirkman and tell him? <laughs> yeah. You know? Tell him. So that way we can get a little love from him too. Maybe we can get some cool stuff from him. You know, yeah, so you see, not only do we help Chu sell shit tons but we're helping out, live, and right. we're helping out invincible as little as we can although it's fine or as much as we can but you know yeah. every little bit counts invincible number 69 uh continues the story arc adam eve and invincible have started their own little business mm-hmm. um where they are kind of like uh, contractors Superheroes, for, uh, heroes for hire, in a way. Yeah, they they were kind of doing this before this whole conquest thing came down, and um, now they're kind of getting back to it because they got to right. make some money. Yeah, well, of course, you're a superhero. Because Mark used to work at a burger joint a while ago, and that didn't really go uh, through well with him. Uh, oh, did he do that first? So, in other words, is you, are you saying that Bendis got that from Mark uh, from um, yep. Robert he's, Kirkman? He's, he stole that thing for Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate from Kirkman. Spider-Man. Wow, yep. I was not aware of that. I, you're surprised? Yeah. In Invincible number 69, you have not one but two major crises going on on Earth where uh, Invincible and Adam Eve are protecting a nuclear power plant from a villain called Universa. 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 God, names are just awesome in this comic. She kind of looks like a Valkyrie, though, like a, a, a alien Valkyrie, yeah. which is kind of cool. And Universa has to kind of like just... Well, she's there. All the energy yeah. that we have the entire planet of the entire planet's energy, so she can save her own planet. Right. And while that's going on, uh, there's this whole crisis that's been building with these uh, uh, sequids from Mars. I mm-hmm. believe they're from Mars. Uh, they've been hiding out, and now that explodes too. So there's two huge things going on at one time now. And it's it's expertly portrayed by um, Kirkman because you know it's the old. In comics, you never have two things going on at once. You know, it's like when superheroes fight someone, it's always it's always the one big bad and nothing, ne- never two big bads at once. Mm-hmm. Or even if there are two big bads, they're kind of like related to each other. These two big bads are completely unrelated to each other. Yeah, I mean, this is the first, the whole sequence thing has been building for like 10 or 12 issues. Mm-hmm. And then the Universal thing, just the first page. That yeah, he just, just comes throws out of it in there, yeah. right. So it's really clever, and it's 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 fun the way he he approaches this. And I even like this bit in the in the very beginning when um, Invincible com, uh, confronts Universa, and you know he's first he has a hard time hitting a woman. <laughs> yeah, that was another thing. It's like I think that's why I think Kirkman sometimes watches the show because that's something that we're constantly talking about is context of violence in context stuff towards violence women, and, women. And, and, and men. Right. And yeah, and that was a really cool thing where you know. And I like the fact that all right, here's the pages that we're talking about. I like the fact that he's punching Universal in the face, but you see, like Otley has it, and you see it from the back. 
so you don't see it graphically like in the right. face. And then he goes on his whole speech like, you know what? I don't like hitting women. Right. Uh, can we resolve this thing? That's not what I am. That's right. not what I'm about. And right. I kind of like that they threw that in there. Yeah, it's like not. He's. It's not like he's getting off on it. You know, which in many like cases, like in other comics. Yeah, in other comics, you see the the quote unquote hero hits women and doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Although it, my my favorite part though had to be earlier on when um when Invincible says, "Hey, look, all I want you to do is." Just stop killing everyone around you. If you really need this energy, did it ever occur to you to just ask? Just come down and ask us for it. To which Universal says, well, if you, if uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if I take all the energy that I need, it's your, I'm going to suck your planet dry. Because our, my planet's eight times the size yeah, of your planet. eight times the size of your planet, and when I do it, it's going to suck your planet dry. To which Invisible then says, okay, then, we can fight, we can fight now. <laughs> and, you know, this is really quite... It's just very... It makes this character more endearing. I mean, this makes Invincible relatable, Mm -hmm. um, sympathetic in all the things that you need a hero to be. If you want to care about what a hero goes through, he has to have a moral compass, in my opinion. He has to have a moral compass. If there's anything that he... That is being put to the test, though, is his moral compass. Kirkman has been playing with that theme... That Mark is going through all these, you know, these dilemmas. You know, if I kill someone, I don't have to worry about them coming back later and hurting more people. But then what does that make me? These are themes that other uh, more other established writers have explored in their books. And yet Kirkman finds a way to keep it fresh and mm-hmm. keep it and keep it new and, and make it enjoyable. And Ryan Otley God, yeah. just brings it with every issue you know we're flipping through this and you, um, even when you get to the end we get to the letters page at the end kirkman mm-hmm. is giving kudos to the rest of the team for not only doing stellar work but doing it on time getting that book out on time in today's age where the quote-unquote superstar artist just can't seem to finish a book on a regular basis and get it mm-hmm. done on time otley and crew do it and they do it marvelous yeah i was gonna say because man i'm gonna go on record and saying you know for our awards this is my own personal world ryan otley and, and uh ryan otley and and cliff rathburn and, and fco the color sign these guys this is the best art in a comic period like of all of all year i mean they they had uh they had a car what's his name did a couple of fill-in issues. Um, the guy who created it, Corey Walker. Corey, thank you, Jesus, yeah. I can't believe. It. Corey Walker did two issues. The Corey Walker is really good um, on his own, but Ryan Otley has made this book his own, and this is the best comic book art period right now to me. And this book is just beautiful every month. See the thing: there's no rushing. Yeah, every page and every panel is just as good as the previous one. Right. The thing, though, is that I know some folks have commented on the boards that they feel that the artwork is a little too cartoony for them. But again, back to the to the part about it's tone. A comic book. I know, it, the, but there is a <laughs> tone to it that Otley is able to pull off. Mm-hmm. You know, the book the book you know it walks that fine line that I said like even uh, uh, Rob Guillory does with Chu. Otley is one of the most underappreciated unheralded talents in comics the guy really should be getting more recognition for what he does has um, oddly been recognized as one of the wizard top 10 artists i don't know i stopped reading wizard like 10 years ago okay well i'm just saying he should be recognized for this if he hasn't already you look at this comic and the more you read it when you read issue after issue after issue you understand the artistic choices that they make here Mm -hmm. That every panel, every layout serves a purpose. The, the the style of the artwork serves a purpose. You look at what um, Otley did with Haunt, and you even see the strengths that he brought to that book mm-hmm. and the issue. How the, he, the, not even he could save that book. Yeah, but I mean, there were some parts that you could really tell it was him. Right. You know, doing his thing, and 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 struggling with the story. So, but yeah. So, but I'm reading this book, and I'm like this. If you want a superhero comic and you want to get kids into comics too, um, I know someone got their pennies all in a bunch when we ripped on Image United because they said they gave it to their like ten year old nephew and he absolutely loved it. Oh, and that's fine, yeah. you know. But the reason we ripped on it is because like, that's just not what we like. 
yeah, these comics can't coexist. It may, uh, Invincible, though it, it deals with mature themes at times, and yeah, it does get graphically violent every once in a while, teenagers could easily be, yeah, they can re- read yeah. this, and it's easily accessible. And I'm reading this comic, and it's like, this is what superhero comics should be. I mean, right. you have Invincible fighting Universa, and, and Adam Eve is is there with him. So it's like, you know, she's helping him out. And then you have this whole side story with the Sequids, and it's the Guardians of the Globe. So you have two huge fights in, in the stories going on in the same book. And there's there's just no wasted space in this book no at all. No wasted space, no running in circles, no, no running in no place. No decompression, yeah. you know, no people talking around a fucking dinner table for eight pages. <laughs> Not, I mean, and there is character development as it goes along, even within the yeah. story. And even last issue, when Invisible was sitting at a dinner table uh, with conversation with Animus parents, it was one page, and you know, one that page. dialogue was better than anything Bendis has written in the last ten years. <laughs> oh, oh. So, but yeah, it's like, I don't know, I'm glad that this, this, this the sales on this book have actually, I think, uh, I've been checking month to month, they're actually going up a little bit, and I'm glad that people have found this book out because of us and are reading it and loving it and telling friends about it. Um, But yeah, you're just going to keep hearing about this book until it stops being awesome. And that's never (laughs) going to happen, I think. For 69 issues straight, it's been fucking awesome. All right. When we come back, we have yet another review. Another independent. Another independent that we think deserves some attention. And uh, we'll also have a couple more announcements, so we hope you join us.